Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at velocity. So let's get started. So we'll start with the definition of velocity and then we'll look at its equation and then we'll finish by looking at how to find the resultant velocity of an object. So firstly, we define velocity as the displacement per unit time. And remember, the units of time are seconds. So this pair means divided by. So we've got displacement divided by time or displacement each second. So we've got displacement per unit time and we say it's a vector quantity. So remember, as it says down here, we can think of velocity as being the vector equivalent of speed. So that is a speed with a direction. And we can say that velocity is equal to the displacement divided by time. And that's because if we're thinking about the vector equivalent of speed being velocity, then we have to think about the vector equivalent of distance, which is displacement s. So we have v equals s over t, or the form that you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam is s equals vt, where s is displacement measured in meters, v is velocity measured in meters per second, and t is time measured in seconds. And lastly, it says you could be asked to find the resultant velocity of an object. Remember, you can use the scale diagram method or calculation method to do this. Now, if you've watched my previous theory videos, you'll see I went through how to do the scale diagram method and the calculation method in two separate videos for the case of finding a resultant displacement. But it's done in exactly the same way to find resultant velocity. So if we look at this example here, it says a skydiver falls with a constant speed of 40 meters per second. A wind blows to the east at a speed of 10 meters per second. By scale diagram or otherwise, find the resultant velocity of the skydiver. Well, when they say or otherwise in the question, they mean by the calculation method. So I'm going to use the calculation method here because I think it will be a wee bit quicker than using the scale diagram method, but it is also valid to use that method if you want to. So using the calculation method, if I was to sketch the situation first, it doesn't need to be neat, it doesn't need to be with a ruler because it's not the scale diagram one. I'm just trying to see what my vectors look like. So we have our vector of 40 meters per second going south, that's our velocity vector, and I've labeled this A. And then we have our velocity vector for the wind, which is 10 meters per second east. And we've labeled this vector as B, and you'll notice they've been joined nose to tail to create this right angled triangle. So because our starting point is over here and our finishing point is here, then our resultant vector is going to be drawn from start to finish and it's going to go from there to there in this direction. So we've got the double arrow there to show the direction and we can label this side C, the hypotenuse. Our last label there is the angle theta, which remember is always going to be drawn next to the starting point. So if this is my starting point next to the first vector, then that's my angle theta in there. So remember, we need to find both the magnitude and the direction for our resultant velocity. So we can use Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and we can plug in the numbers to get 40 squared plus 10 squared, and that will give you 1,700 in your calculator. And then you can square root that to find c, the magnitude of the unknown side. So we've got the square root of 1,700, which gives us 41 meters per second, which again, you can do in your calculator. And then to find the direction, we first need to find the angle. So remember, we always want to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent to find the angle. So if we plug in the opposite and adjacent values, if we look back at the sketch, We've got opposite the angle is 10 meters per second and adjacent to the angle is 40 meters per second. So we have 10 over 40, which gives us 0 0.25 or a quarter. And then to get the angle theta, we need to do inverse tan or shift tan in your calculator to get inverse tan of 0 0.25. And putting that into your calculator will give you roughly 14 degrees. And now we're in a position to write down our final statement, but we need to think about the direction and using this angle with compass points or bearings. So our angle is 14 degrees. And if we look back at the picture here, if this is 14 degrees in here, we need to be able to describe this in terms of compass points or bearings. And remember, you can choose which one you use in your final answer. So if I was using compass points, first of all, remember this is going to be south down here and my resultant vector is over here. So I am 14 degrees towards east away from south. So I could say 14 degrees east of south, or if I was using bearings, remember we define bearings from north, zero, zero, zero. So if I was to draw a little northeast, southwest on my starting point here, then north is gonna be up here, zero, 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 and I want to come all the way around until I get to the resultant vector. So you'll see that obviously to get to south, it's gonna be 180 degrees or a bearing of 180. So if I'm not going as far as that, if I'm just coming to this resultant vector here, then it's going to be 180 minus the 14 degrees, which is 166 or 166 degrees. So writing that as a bearing, we have 
166. So that means I can write my final answer as 41 meters per second at 14 degrees east of south, or 41 meters per second at a bearing of 166. And you can choose which of those you write down. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.